Hello everyone. In this video I'd like to talk about application of convolutional neural networks for segmentation of volume electron microscopy data set. Uh, the data set which you can see on the screen was obtained using focused ion beam scanning electron microscopy. It is an U2 OS cell imaged with the resolution of 2.5 nanometers in XY and 5 nanometers in Z orientation. With the gray you can see the volume rendering that shows how densely this uh, cell is packed with organelles. Uh, but today I'd like to talk about more um, how we can segment a uh, nuclear envelope in this light blue, mitochondria in the green, uh, Golgi in this dark blue, and endoplasmic reticulum. All uh, trained networks as well as the uh, ground truth data and uh, the, the actual data set, uh, everything is available and the I'll put the links into the description. Okay, the actual uh, training data as well as the train networks, we deposit it to Zenota document. And uh, when you open this document, you can see that uh, it actually made of this, uh, it contains several uh, archives. And uh, in this video, I'd like just to go through these archives to show you how you can actually use this. I already unzipped everything to my drive. And let's see what we have. In the directory, which is called zero segmentation, uh, you can find three subfolders. And these are actually the, the ground truth uh, models that we've used for training of convolutional neural networks. So we can open this. For example, let's take uh, image this one. And you can, I can just drag and drop, drop it into uh, image view panel of microscope image browser. And then I can do the same for labels, but I need to drag and drop the file actually to the segmentation table here. Okay. Uh, what we have now, you, could, you can see that it's a, actually a small uh, sub-volume of nine slices, where only the middle slice is segmented. Let's just change the color of it to some kind of default scheme. So now you can see that the red color uh, has the segmented mitochondria, blue color has uh, Golgi and the yellow has endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the three, basically, uh, in this uh, training set, these are the three uh, organelles that were segmented. For training, we actually decided to train individual uh, convolutional neural networks for each of these organelles to be a little bit more efficient. Uh, and then uh, in order to generate the training sets for each of this, we have uh, these three different protocols. So you can all load the protocols using menu, file, batch processing, and then load. And then let's uh, try, what, let's see what we have on the ER. So the protocol has the list of operations. First, what we need to do, we need to be in the directory where we have images. After that, what it will, uh, the script what it will do, it will load each of these data sets one by one, then it will remove materials which, don't, which are not ER, and then after that it saves the model. Let's see how it works. So I just can press the run protocol. And what happens is that uh, the protocol goes one file by file, loads the data set, loads the, uh, the corresponding labels, and then it uh, extracts on the endoplasmic reticulum and saves it into this ER uh, directory. Let's just stop it for now and let's see what we have there. Um, if I load now, let's say, this data set 62, then what I can do, I can go to load ER and then it's the TIFF format 62. As you can see it's only this, um, only the model of uh, and the plastic reticulum is extracted. And that way we generated the files that we were used we were using for training. You need to take these files eventually for uh, and then move them into this uh, training directory where you have images and the labels. So the images are the same as these ones, but the labels are the ones that we generated using this page processing. Uh, script. Uh, and the similar was done also for the other ones, for Golgi and for mitochondria. Now let's take a look inside this uh, ER. Inside of one ER you can find the two files. 
One of them is the config file for DeepMIB. It's the deep learning tool that we were using. And the other one is the actual trained model. Uh, the DeepMIB is available through the menu tools, deep learning segmentation. And there you just need to load, go to the options tab and load the config file, the corresponding config files. If now we're interested to work with the ER, so I just go to ER and then just load this file. What you can notice that, uh, we remember that we, it's, all, it's only the middle slice which is segmented. And uh, because of that, for segmentation, we were using this 2.5D semantic segmentation workflow. I, I won't go into details how it sort of works, but uh, basically the idea is that when you load the config, everything is populated. And what you can do, you just can go directly and predict a data set. Actually, what you can see here that um, in this particular case, the results of this prediction, so we, will pre we are going to predict the data set, which is located here, which is this predict crop. This is a small sub crop of this bigger data set that uh, just deposited to Empire. So it's only 50 slices, just to give the general idea how it works. Uh, in order to predict it, uh, let's go back to ER results, predicted images, results model. I already have the data set predicted. I can load this, but I can also just do prediction myself. I go to predict tab and uh, basically using these parameters, I can uh, press uh, the predict button. What happens is that uh, it starts prediction and then you see we don't have any model here. And then now after, let's see how long it takes. So I fast forwarded the prediction, but it took us 130 seconds to predict it. Now we can click on this load images and models or load only models if the data set already loaded. And then you can see now the segmentation of uh, whatever segmentation of the data of the plasma reticulum. If you need to apply to any other data set, what you just need to do select in this directory. A folder where you have images, select the proper extension for the file names and hit the predict button. Uh, this is prediction, but I wanted to talk a little bit how we did actually the training. For the training, what you can see in the same folder here in the train ER, we have images and labels. You can split these uh, images and labels uh, for the training and validation set, for example, using this let's say 10% uh, uh, applying for validation, um, then make sure that this pre-process split for training and validation is selected, and then you hit the pre-process button. You can split and copy or split and move. Let's split and copy. What you can see now that uh, four additional folders were created, and the train images train labels contains the data sets that will be used for training and the validation images and validation labels the data sets that will be used for validation during the training process. After that, when you did this, what you can do, you can go to the train and basically hit the train button. I will do it now, but uh, well, actually, yeah, well, if I have the, the data set, uh, the network train network, I can continue for training from it or I can start a new training. I won't do it now, but basically that's the way how the training can be started. Let's delete this once. All right, uh, now uh, pretty much the same stuff was done with the Golgi, but for Golgi we did a little bit additional thing, which is uh, basically we generated uh, patches. Uh, here, uh, what you can see, let's, let's just open it. Let's say this first file here from the Golgi. Um, and then the corresponding labels. Right. Here we can see, well, again, the color is sort of bad. Here you can see Golgi. Again, the middle slice is segmented. Uh, but for Golgi, we used a different approach. Instead of um, taking the whole image, we, are, we actually extracted uh, various patches from areas that have Golgi. Um, and the, the way we did it, we loaded all the images. Oh, let's hold on, let's cancel. I used a different reader. Just let's check this one. Let's 
a little bit quicker. I loaded all the images, then I went to my labels. Div open. Well, again, the co default color is, is different, that's why it's always changes this. Now, each fifth, I, I guess, uh, section has the gold G segmented. And then uh, we go to the annotation tool, annotation list, load from the file. And uh, what, what I have here, I just basically clicked around the, um, the places where I want to generate patches for training. And uh, the way to generate patches, basically select these data sets, right click, and then uh, crop out patches around selected annotations. In this case, what we can do, we can crop out 3D objects uh, with the size of, I think it was 768, uh, 768 by 768 by 5. We actually, we, we were we're using not 9 slices for Golgi, but 5 slices. Then we also crop the model and we can pick up T format and then we can put select output directories. Let's put here like patches. Select folder and do the crop. Uh, we also can do some additional, for example, we can include that coordinate. Let's see what happens. What is going on now that uh, we generate patches it's an image, and then it's the corresponding uh, model files. When it's finished, we need to assemble these patches into the folders, which we call uh, train. Uh, just the whole first, just images, and then labels. I'll copy. Let's see when it finishes. So a few more seconds. So it's done now. Um, now I can copy images. This is AM files to the images and then labels into the labels subfolders. Let me show and then I can delete these patches. I don't need that anymore. We have there images. Let's take this number four and then we can load the same, the corresponding uh, labels. TF number four now there are five slices and the middle slice is only segmented and the segmentation model is the model of Golgi uh, then uh, we go back to deep MIP and then go to the options load and then go to the uh, Golgi Golgi config and here what we again uh, basically this is train network if you want to just segment the data set we can hit go to predict tab and press predict button and then in this case what we're gonna get i'll just preview show it preview yeah we're gonna get this the this small sub volume that we have is segmented uh if we want to do training it's uh, the same way as with the previous data set we need to split this two into the training and validation set so to do that we again can specify the percentage of Images that go to validation, select here split files for training and validation, press pre-process. can split and copy, split and move, let's do split and move now. What happened is that uh, these images and labels were split into the train images, train labels and validation images and labels. And these are directors that will be used for training. Then I go to the train tab and then basically hit the train button to start training. And as a result of this, you, you can get a trained model, trained convolutional model that you can use to segment um, Golgi from uh, the full data set or any other data set which has the kind of similar properties. Uh, the other one is mitochondria. The mitochondria is slightly different. Here, the, the difference is that the, the, the mitochondria, um, the network for mitochondria uh, was trained on the twice down sample data set. If I go to data set parameters, I can see that my actually XYZ are all five nanometers because XY dimension was uh, down sampled in two times. 
and that was the data set that we used for training. Uh, the rest is sort of the same as in the um, in the ER in the ER. But uh, the the other actual difference here, let let me load the config mitochondria config. Uh, the the data set that is predicted is actually not the full rest data set, but it's also twice down sample data set. If you want to apply this for the full size data set, then you need to upsize the results. Finally, for nuclear envelope, we have a little bit different set of the training images. Here we were just using the 2D network. Let me load the config. Here is the config. You can see that this is 2D semantic cementation using DeepLab version 3 ResNet 50. And uh, basically in this case, each of these images that we have here for nuclear envelope, let me just drag and drop it there. And then do the same for, uh, for labels. Just select them all, drag and drop here. Well, again, the colors is kind of bad. Yeah, this is basically just individual 2D uh, images. And then the nuclear envelope model was generated just using the 2D network. The difference with the 2.5D network versus 2D network is that in the 2.5D, uh, we were actually doing this uh, Z to C. So it means that these uh, nine or five slices that we have in our volume were moved towards the color channels. And that's uh, this kind of the multicolored image was actually used for training. All right, uh, hopefully this would be a little bit more clear how you can actually work with this data set that we have. Uh, also, some additional details are shown in this uh, in this PDF, so you can go and there are some kind of details of how the things are organized. You can see the examples of the models um, as well as some links and also details how we did this kind of cropping of these patches and all other things that I was trying to describe in this uh, small video. Alright, great. Thank you so much for attention.